Now at four, we are getting our first images from the Orion capsule and its journey to the moon following this morning's historic liftoff as NASA's, of NASA's most powerful rocket. The Artemis One mission finally launching from the Space Coast after months of delays. And you're seeing there on your screen our first Earth views. This view of Earth captured from a human-rated spacecraft not seen since 1972 during the final Apollo mission some 50 years ago. Now getting to this point came down to the wire, including some risky repairs right before takeoff. New 6's James Barbero takes us through what we missed overnight and what's next. Jubilation as NASA's most powerful rocket finally gets off the ground. After several years of expensive delays, including the last eight months going back and forth between rollouts and rollbacks, the space launch system now going to the moon for the first mission under the Artemis program. On behalf of all the men and women across our great nation who have worked to make this day possible, and for the Artemis generation, this is for you. Unlike the two previous launch attempts this year, NASA was able to solve problems during the countdown with enough time to avoid another scrub. My heart was pumping. Three technicians risking their lives as members of the Red Crew performing live repairs at the launch pad, fixing a leak as the 322-foot SLS was fueled with hundreds of thousands of gallons of highly explosive propellants. The rockets, you know, it's alive, it's creaking, it's making venting noises, it's, it's pretty scary. SLS propelling the Orion capsule on its path to orbit the moon. Cameras showing Earth and the mannequins on board. NASA says the 26-day mission that will blaze the trail for astronauts flying on SLS and later astronauts landing on the moon is going as planned so far. As we now explore the heavens, as we go back to the moon, and then we go to Mars. After its journey of more than a million miles, NASA says Orion is expected to splash down in the Pacific Ocean on December 11th. At NASA's Kennedy Space Center, I'm James Sparvero, getting results, News 6. Okay, did you guys stay up and watch it? No, ma'am. Have, have you met me? <laughs> <laughs> so two no's and a yes. yes. And I couldn't even see it from where I normally would at yes. my house. But just watching it on TV and just hearing the elation from people yes. on NASA TV, because this is a life's work for so many people. And it was just so wonderful that mm -hmm. it finally was yes. a success. Yeah, I heard, I saw so many people posting on Facebook that they had a relative mm -hmm. who had worked on yes. this very project years ago. Yeah, and yeah. they were so excited to finally see it come to fruition. Thank so. goodness. Mm -hmm. Yes, and of course, out on the Space Coast, it was a bright sight. Yeah, the fireball, large Ooh. enough to show up on weather radar and loud enough to set off car alarms near the vehicle assembly building. The spectacular view, well worth the wait, as some staked out spots more than 12 hours in advance. It was pretty bad, and it almost made me and Mommy think that the sun was coming up. <laughs> so it is right, uh -huh. too. Despite the early morning liftoff, officials say all launch viewing areas still reached capacity. They estimate as many as 100,000 people came out to watch this liftoff. And we are getting some incredible Whoa. photos sent to clickorlando.com slash pins of the launch. Take a look at this shot from Stargazer Ron in Palm Bay. That just mm. looks absolutely gorgeous. And make sure to check out some of those views. Also online, find the latest mission, video, and what's next for Artemis and its journey to the moon. Again, that is clickorlando.com slash space.